thank you for taking time this morning to be with us. Obviously, I'm uh, not in our normal location at 55 South Portage Path. Uh, you're in my dining room right now. Uh, as we're just having church from home, we had a lot of snow come in this weekend. And so just for the safety of people in our church, those who get up early and set up and tear down, we thought it would be just incredibly important for us to hit pause on the weekend, not gather together at Portage Path CLC, and instead decide that we would just record this message, what I was going to share with you anyways, so that you could watch it from the comfort of your own home, uh, spend time with your family, you can go out, build a snowman, you can watch this thing on the go. And so whether you're watching this thing on our website or on YouTube, on Facebook, just once again, thank you for taking time to check out this video. And so this past week, uh, my wife and I and our son Everett, we had an opportunity to go to Kalahari. If you've never been, it's awesome, right? Indoor water park in January. It doesn't get much better than that. Now, I will say um, there are some people, as you will see at any place that has water, who are dressed maybe in a way that they shouldn't be dressed. But either way, that's not what we're talking about this morning. Um, something unprecedented happened at Kalahari this week. It had nothing to do with the services that we were at at night or uh, our sessions in the morning where we got to learn and grow. Those were awesome. But the unprecedented thing that happened was my wife left the hotel and for the first time in almost 12 years of marriage did not take the tiny shampoo and tiny soap with her. In fact, my wife, her thinking when it comes to going to a hotel is we paid for it. So pretty much if it's not bolted down, she thinks we can take it with us. Now, she's never stolen, but if she could take it, if you could make an argument for taking it, my wife has taken it. And so I just noticed the other day, we, we don't have little mini Kalahari soaps. And I asked her, I'm like, what, what's going on with that? And she had this commitment. I'm going to probably give the credit to Marie Kondo if you've watched Tidying Up on Netflix. But Katie just said, I don't want the clutter, right? Because for the longest time, the reason this was such a surprising thing for me is my wife associated not bringing those things home with wasting money. Now, maybe you're like my wife and you just hate wasting money, right? You'll, you'll get a to-go box or a doggy bag from a restaurant from the worst meal you've had in your life because you don't want to waste money, right? You'll, you'll take 20 pictures of the same sunset because you don't want to waste that moment. You're one of those parents who when your kid goes to a basketball game and the score is six to four after 20 minutes of playing, you're the one with your phone still pointing out. You have no clue what's actually happening because everything you see is coming through a screen, right? We as people don't like wasting things. And yet, as followers of Jesus, what I see happen all the time, and I've been guilty of this, is we waste the blessings of God. Now, what I mean is this. We appreciate them in the moment. We might tell somebody about it in the moment. But you give us a little bit of time, and boy, how easily we forget. I think about it, the last time something bad happened. Was your response to remember all the great things God had done? Or did you just focus automatically on, man, God didn't come through this time. Or man, that prayer, maybe it was wasted. Right, when things happen, we tend to forget how good God has been. And so as we've been in this series called Invent the Future, and we're talking about the things we can do today that are going to set us up for 10 years from now, as we talk about how the best way to predict the future is to invent it, to take steps today for the future. The question is, how do we keep ourselves from wasting the blessings of God, from celebrating it for a moment and then forgetting about it later? Well, I think the answer from the book of Joshua is actually quite simple. We have to start setting up some stones. So what do I mean? Well, in Joshua chapter 3, Pastor Emily preached last week about how God parted the waters of the Jordan, that the Jordan River at one point just stopped up and that the people of Israel were able to cross through on dry ground. Now that happens in chapter 3, but in chapter 4 of the book of Joshua, the miracle is still happening. In fact, we see in verse 1, it says this in Joshua 4 verse 1, that when all the people had crossed the Jordan, the Lord said to Joshua, Now choose twelve men, one from each tribe. Tell them, take twelve stones from the very place where the priests are standing in the middle of the Jordan. Carry them out 
and pile them up at the place where you will camp tonight. So think about this. Put yourself in their spot. You have these priests in the middle of a river. Water is piled up just away from them, barely away from them. You can see the fish swimming around. You see the dry ground you're on. All the people have crossed over. And instead of you running out as quickly as you can, which is what I would do, God says, I want you to wait a minute. I want these guys to go back into the river and collect 12 stones, and you're going to put them where you camp tonight. See, what I think is so important about this is that in the middle of God's miracle, what he wanted the people to do was to set up a reminder, to set up a stone, right? To to take these 12 stones and put them where they were going to camp so that that night they could remember, man, look what God did. So maybe you're wondering, well, what's the significance of these stones, of this altar they would set up? Well, quite simply, these stones for them were a reminder of God's faithfulness to them and his love for them, right? That they could look at that and say, man, God, he did what he said he was going to do. He got us where he said he was going to get us, and he loves us like crazy. He didn't leave us. He didn't forsake us. He's not going to abandon us. We look at these stones, and they're a reminder of God's faithfulness to us and his love for us. I think it's important for us as we're going through things and as life happens, as God does things in our life, I think it's so important that we go through the practice of setting up stones. Now, I'm not telling you to pick up a rock. What I'm saying is this, is that find a way to have something that reminds you of what God did. So I've got a few examples here for you. Uh, One of the first examples, this is a, a notebook from 2012, 2013. And and in this notebook, in this journal, um, this is the journey that God took us on when he first put it in our hearts to start a church, to do this thing that scared us to death, right? There's notes in here. I was looking through it tonight and there's just these notes of what God was downloading to us in that season. There's drawings in there and I'm a terrible drawer, but drawings in there to show us, man, here's what God was saying to us. So I can look back now, six years later, six and a half years later for some of these notes and go, man, look at what God did. I've got a License plate. This is from a trailer that a company that we had very little association with donated to our church. They they heard about this church plant from a guy who was leaving our team, right? Didn't want anything to do with our church, was leaving our team. And they said, hey, we want to give you the trailer. I've also got here a, a lease agreement for the house that I'm in now. This house that if you don't know, God gave to our church for free. And this was just the starting point, this lease agreement. And then I've also got this card here I just ran across today. This is a Father's Day card from just weeks after my first son ever was born. And this this to me just reminds me how good God was, how long we waited for a child, how we went through a miscarriage, God pulled us through it, and then we have this son that's now two and a half, and he's awesome, right? This is a stone that reminds me every time I look at it, every time I open it, of God's faithfulness to me and his love for me and for my wife. We need to be in the practice of setting up stones. Now, here's the thing, though, about stones, is that it's not just enough for you to remember what God did in your life, and it's not just enough for me to recognize what God has done in my life. We have to remember that what God does for me is not just for me, that what God does for you is not just for you, that God has a bigger plan in mind. And he wants us to take the blessings that he gives us and he wants us to share those things with other people. He wants us to set up these stones so other people can see the stone and say, look what God can do. So that other people can see the stone and say, hey, if God can do that for them, what can he do for me? So that they could see that and go, man, when God puts a dream in your heart He's faithful, and his love is going to carry you through. We need to set up stones for other people. In fact, God made this clear to Joshua here in Joshua chapter 4, starting in verse 4. So Joshua called together the 12 men he, the 12 men he had chosen, one from each of the tribes of Israel. He told them, go into the middle of the Jordan in front of the ark of the Lord your God, Each of you must pick up one stone and carry it on your shoulder. So these stones, they're not pebbles. These things are big. They're recognizable. He wants them to be visible. 
He says in verse 6, we will use these stones to build a memorial in the future. If you ever take notes in your Bible, I'd underline that, in the future. Your children will ask you, what do these stones mean? Then you can tell them, they remind us that the Jordan River stopped flowing when the Ark of the Lord's Covenant went across. These stones will stand as a memorial among the people of Israel forever. What God does in you is never just for you. God wants to take the things that he's done in our life. He doesn't want us to waste them, but he wants us to get the most out of them. He wants the stones in our life to be visible so that people like our children, like my son, can hear about God's faithfulness. So your coworkers can see God's love on display. So your family member that you don't get along with, even if they don't like you, they can't help but admit that God just might be real. God wants us to set up these stones, not just to remind ourselves, but as an example to everyone around us of his faithfulness to us and his love for us. And so I want to end our time together with something incredibly practical, because I really think the best thing you can do today is to begin setting up stones. For some of you, hey, you might have something laying around that you would have never thought, man, that's a stone. Man, treasure that thing. Figure out where you can put that thing so you can remember it. For others of you, God is doing something right now that you've been quiet about. Or maybe you're just now recognizing, man, here's something God is doing for me or something God has done for me in the past. What I want you to do is set up a stone. One of the best things you can do, whether you're watching this on on YouTube or on Facebook especially, is would you just leave a comment below? Maybe this is a time for you to share a stone because here's what I will tell you. 50 years ago, people could have these memorials in their home and they get to tell a few people. Today, with the internet, we have the ability to share the faithfulness and love of God like never before. So maybe you want to share this video. You want to put it out there and say, hey, here's what God has done in my life. Or if you want to see what God can do in someone's life, watch this quick video. It's, it's awesome, right? The guy who's speaking is incredibly good looking, better looking than you could possibly imagine. And he's incredibly humble too. But just take a minute, leave a comment, say, I mean, this is what God has done in my life. Maybe send somebody a message or write down the blessings that God's given you. But whatever you do, make sure today that you start setting up stones. Because one of the best ways to get where God has us, wants us to be in the future is to look back on what he's done in the past and to recognize what he's doing in the present. I just want to end our time to pray for us. So Jesus, I thank you for my friends who are watching this online today or maybe listening to it on the podcast, checking it out on the Innovation Church app. God, however they're listening to it or watching it, God, I just pray that you would help us to recognize your goodness to us. God, help us to remember what you've done, to not take your goodness for granted, but to actively start setting up stones to remind us and to show others how faithful you've been to us and how much you love us. Jesus, I just pray that you would help us to be good stewards of what you've done in our lives. Help us to have an incredible time with family and friends as we share what you've done and help us once again to never take this for granted. Jesus, we love you. We thank you. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Once again, thank you for checking out this video. We'd love if you follow us online, share this video, let us know, hey, what is God doing in your life? Make sure to set up some stones. Have a great day.